So this is part four in my series about real-time six DAW volumetric video. This video is going to be pretty long, and it's going to just be mostly examples of six DAW video and changing settings and looking at stuff. So if you're watching this video, you're probably already into that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, just uh, be prepared for some real nerd shit, you know? Before I get into the new stuff, I want to talk a little bit about where I had it before. This is the mesh displacement technique I was using before. Turns out my math was a little wrong in how I was computing the depths, so this is where I have it now. And you can see the depths are a lot more accurate, and everything feels sort of uh, where it should be placed. If we look at this video of a log in a creek, um, you can see everything is just much more spatially accurate. For example, you can see this path up this hill here really feels like it's going into the distance, and the trees um, really occlude everything sort of naturally. Obviously the distortion and stuff, but um, just uh, everything feels a lot more realistic, especially when you look at this in VR. So here I am in Windows Mixed Reality looking at our interactive music video called the Cooties VR. I went back and pushed this math change to it so that all the depths are far more accurate now and it really does look a lot better. This video looks pretty jerky, that's really just from the capture and in VR it looked totally fine. And really um, the depths are much more accurate. Having been in that space to shoot that video, it really does feel a lot more like you're really there. If you have a Windows Mixed Reality headset, this music video is available now in the Windows Store. It's totally free, so if you check it out, uh, please let me know what you think. Uh, but yeah, enough of that already. Let's get into the new stuff. Point clouds. So basically what you're looking at here is a point cloud, which is really just like a bunch of points all rendered in space, and each point has a color. My first attempt at this, I actually rendered everything on the CPU, and it was actually very slow. I would get maybe four or five frames per second at 2048 by 2048. This is actually my second attempt, and this is using a compute shader to compute all the positions and colors in real time on the GPU, and that way you get a lot better performance. The resolution right now is 2048 by 2048. Half of that is the depth map and half of that is the color information. So you could think of it as the picture area is 2048 by 1024 which means this is computing over 2 million points and updating in real time. We can actually up the resolution to 4096 by 4096 and now we're computing over 8 million points in real time. This does have some drawbacks. For some reason it doesn't render the right eye in VR. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why that is. It's probably a bug I can overcome but I had actually moved on anyway because uh, I was running into some garbage collection issues. It's pretty technical, and I did overcome it eventually um, in this compute shader, but I had moved on anyway to another technique. So you can see I've switched to a different script now, and I'm actually going back down to that lower resolution of 2048 by 2048. This was my third attempt at the point cloud thing, and this is the technique that I'm sort of moving forward with. Instead of relying on the compute shader to compute positions and colors every frame, I only call it at once to compute all of the points on a normal sphere, and then use a technique similar to the displacement shader to render the colors and depth positions. Also, I should just mention real quick, I'm wearing a Windows Mixed Reality headset to do all the positional tracking, and I'm just capturing in Unity because the capture was getting better frame rates that way. I'm going to up the resolution back to 4096 by 4096, and you'll see that, you know, you can notice a lot more color because there are a lot more points, but there's still a lot of that background gray you can see there. It's sort of like an, an extreme screen door effect, uh, especially when looking at this through an HMD. It's really just a problem of the individual points being generated are sort of infinitely small. In OpenGL, you can change point size, but for whatever reason, DirectX 11 doesn't support that anymore, so... That's uh, like a super nerdy detail you don't need to know, but it did force me to write yet another shader. This is what's known as billboarding. So from each individual point, you then calculate out four more points and make that into a quad. And those quads always face the camera. And in that way, sort of each point turns into sort of a bigger rectangle. So we're actually going to go down in resolution back to 2048 by 2048. Even though this is a lower resolution, I can switch to the new shader that allows me to change the billboarded quad size. And that way sort of fill up the space between points and get rid of that screen door effect. So you can see immediately there's already a lot more color and a lot less of that gray background, even though we're back down to that 2048 by 2048 resolution. 
you can also see when I get close up to something that each individual point is this sort of rectangular quad instead of one single pixel. Another kind of interesting thing is I'm varying the size of the quads not only by that slider, but also based on the distance from the origin point. So the further away quads are larger than the closer ones. I'm doing this to sort of fill up the frame evenly. If you don't do this, then you end up with a bunch of quads either overlapping with each other or not filling in the gaps between each point. This sort of makes sense if you think about it, because the points being captured close to the camera are much denser than the points further away. So this is just compensating for that. So another thing I did here is change the clear flags from color or skybox to depth only. So what that does is anything that would have been that background gray color is now just not changed from whatever previous color it was. Now this gives you like this really sort of trippy effect in all of the places that would have had background. This can actually be pretty nauseating, especially in VR, but it does give you sort of an idea of what it could look like with some pixels filled in instead of that gray. You can sort of imagine where you could go with maybe like a color repeating or even like a real-time content aware fill sort of algorithm. This could be pretty convincing, but for now it's just sort of an interesting way to kind of fill in those areas. Here I'm just showing just exactly how trippy and smeary and distorted it can get. I was looking sort of past all the point cloud just to the background and just showing the extreme example. Uh, here I'm just sort of upping the quad size now and this actually looks a lot better with the depth map cleared just because there's more pixels on the screen and there's more color and, and less background area shown. Since all of the quads are big and they're sort of overlapping with each other you get sort of this painterly effect which is kind of cool and um, might be useful for something. And just for comparison real quick we'll look at the same size quads but we'll go back to the gray background so you can see the difference. So here's a pretty good example. You can see when I walk up close here that the drawback of having larger quads is you sort of lose some detail and resolution and you get that sort of like painterly effect. So here we're actually going back up in resolution again to 4096 by 4096. And I'm going to go down in quad size so that, you know, it kind of matches. So we should get sort of a higher detail, higher resolution. Although you'll see it will affect the frame rate a little bit. So here I'm just upping the quad size a little bit. So we still have the detail of that 4K resolution, but it's just the quads are a little closer together and fill up the space a little bit more. So again, this is 4096 by 4096, which is a 4096 by 2048 picture area, which means we're at just over 8 million quads. All right, so let's just look at some more footage to get some more examples. I'll go ahead and load up the log in the creek again. So yeah, here we are. Um, I shot this in Washington State, just on the other side of the Oregon border. We're still at that 4096 by 4096 resolution. So that's uh, 4096 by 2048 picture area and, and uh, 8 million quads. This area with the log and the rocks here, I think especially looks really good. And I guess it's just like right at, right at the right depth. It's really optimal. I'll go ahead and turn the clear flags to depth only and we can sort of look at it with that sort of filled in look. There's some leaves blowing in the breeze. This area also with the two trees, this rock also looks particularly good. All right, let's go ahead and look at another video.
this is a room uh, for a project we're potentially working on, but I had the footage, and uh, so you can sort of walk around. All the depths look much more accurate than they used to, and that's just thanks to the math fix I talked about at the beginning of the video. I can actually walk behind the counter here and, and kind of look at the whole room from this counter area in the kitchen. So yeah, well, that's pretty neat. Um, I've just got sort of one more thing I was working on. I'm going to go ahead and turn these four things on. And so basically what you're looking at here looks pretty noisy. But this is just the same room we were just looking at. When we recorded that video, we actually recorded it in three conjoining spaces as well. So this is actually four different point clouds all sort of put together. There's a lot of overlap, especially in the areas that go far into the distance, and that's what makes it so noisy. But you can definitely see this has some real potential for sort of shooting from multiple angles and combining them. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in VR. We're down to 1024 by 1024 in each of the four rooms. That means that each room is about a half million quads, and therefore it's about two million quads in total. I think the real bottleneck here is actually in the video playback, but so that's why the resolutions are lowered in each room. So I'm using a motion control here just to do some very basic locomotion. Basically I'm holding on the trigger and moving forward, uh, but that allows me to move here from the living room to the bedroom area. I've mentioned it in previous videos, but we shot all of these 360 videos with a GoPro Odyssey, and it was stitched with Google Jump. And Google Jump also provided us with the depth maps that allows us to do all of this sick stuff. So essentially we had four camera setups, and in VR I'm traveling from camera setup to camera setup. I'm going to speed this section up just to go a little faster. One sort of interesting thing here is you can actually see how kind of far away you can get, and there's a lot of depth information recorded by these cameras. It's actually really surprising. So just for the sake of experimentation, I'm going to up the resolution to 4096 by 4096. So that means each point cloud is over 8 million quads, and we have four point clouds, so we're over 33 million quads now. You can see the frame rate took a real hit, but it is still, uh, you know, chugging along. This is all playing back and recording on Asus Helios 300, so sort of a, a mid-level gaming laptop. So that's pretty much it for this video. Not really sure what I should do next with any of the Six Stuff stuff, so if you have an idea of what I should do next, or just something you'd like to see in Six Stuff, or you have a comment or a question, please comment below. I've also been thinking about putting together a Six Stuff viewer app that would allow you to sideload your own Six Stuff videos and pictures. Not really sure if there's a lot of interest in that, but if that kind of thing appeals to you, um, leave a comment and tell me. Alright, thanks for watching.